Welcome to New England Authors. So good to have you. We present uh, different authors from, from this area talking about uh, a range of subjects, and we thank the Curiosity Foundation for its support. And today our guest is Armando Lucas Correa. Welcome to the show, thank Armando. You. It's so good to have you. Uh, Armando wrote uh, the best-selling book, German Girl, mm -hmm. and, and wrote the sequel to it, which is right in front of us here, called The Daughter's Tale. Uh, and it's been translated, both books have been translated into a number of languages mm -hmm. I've seen. And so uh, you grew up in Cuba, right? I'm in Cuba. You're I live in New York now, but I left my country in 1991. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, tell, tell us a bit about your history yeah. and uh, how being an art critic and a journalist <laughs> has molded your writing. Well, I always want to be a writer, I think, since I was a child. And then I study something called like a drama and, you know, analysis, theater analysis. Yes. And I became like a theater critic, a dance and theater critic. And I worked, my first job, it was in a magazine called Tablas. It's like a theater magazine in Cuba. Uh -huh. And I got the opportunity, I, I was invited by Pride Institute in New York for a conference, and you know, and I stay here. Yeah, oh, I see, <laughs> I see. Uh, uh -huh. And so, my, my first job in the United States was at the Herald, the Miami Herald the as a reporter. Herald, yeah. And I uh, think... The, the, uh, the Spanish edition. The Spanish edition, El Nuevo Herald. And I remember around 1993, I started writing The German Girl. Wow. It was a like a more time. than 10 years, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. a long time. So uh, the, the both books, uh, this is a part of a series, right? Both mm -hmm. books deal with World War II. Do mm -hmm. you have personal experience of that? or? And not really. Uh, the German girl is based in the, you know, the San Luis, the, uh, the MS San Luis. The, the, the ship, the, the San ship Louis, who yeah. left uh, Germany in 1939 in the middle of the... Nazi Germany with Hitler on the power with more than 900 Jewish refugees. All of them, they have permit of disembarking Havana and they were rejected. Only 28 disembark. They, uh, the president at the moment, Laredo Bru in Cuba, requested another $500 per passenger. Mm -hmm. And then after a week of negotiating, you know, a discount from the $500, they left Havana June 2nd, I think, I remember. And um, they were trying to go to the United States, and Ru Roosevelt and Mackenzie in Canada rejected them. In the middle of the ocean, they found a couple of countries who accepted them, uh, Belgium, France, Holland, and Great Britain. And of course, the only one uh, who were safe, like uh, without you know, going to Auschwitz, it was the, the Great Britain one. Yeah. And I grew up with the story. I remember... Uh, and my grandmother, from my mother's side, she's from Spanish, you know, uh, their parent came from Spain. Yes. And she was pregnant with my mom when the boat, the boat arrived in Havana. Uh -huh. And I remember during dinner at home when I was a child, my grandmother, you know, she was a little crazy, saying Cuba is going to pay very dearly because of what they did to the Jewish refugees. Yeah. And in Cuba, you don't have any information about the San Luis. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So the, the ship was um, was uh, rejected, and it was uh, one of the reasons that we have asylum laws now. Mm -hmm. The people who seek asylum should be... Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. were, uh, because the people who were rejected, many of them went to their deaths. Exactly. Uh, yeah, 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 it's terrible. And that had, a, that had an impact on you, yeah? Oh, my God, yes. I remember when I went to college and I went to the National Archive and I was working my thesis, you know, about theater, and I asked to the librarian, uh, do you have anything here about the St. Louis? And it was like a secret. She told me, oh, my God, we used to have like a three boxes labeled with the St. Louis, but all of them disappeared during 1970s. Oh, I see. And, you know, this is something like it's, it's shameful. I think this is reason, even in the United States, if you, if you realize uh, during Obama, it was in 2009 that he, they did something in the Congress trying to apologize to all these refugees. And it was last year, and I helped the office of the prime minister in Canada to invite all the survivors from the St. Louis and they did an apologize in the co in the House of Commons, yeah. but it was last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, the, the 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 both books t uh, are based on true events, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. World War Two, 
And uh, you talk about the Nazi sacking of a French village. I forgot the name of mm -hmm. it. Uh, Orador sur Glen. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and there were many outrages during that war, right? <laughs> yeah. There were many massacres and so Why did you pick that particular uh, village? You know why? Because when I was during the process of researching and traveling, trying to find more details about the, the St. Louis, I found postcard from Arador Sur Glen, and of course another village too. Yeah. But uh, what is the reason that Orador Sur Glen impacted me and I want to use it in the second book? It's because it's the same like the St. Louis. You know, it's easy to say that Hitler killed over 600 uh, million Jewish, yeah. and, you know. But when in the tragedy of the St. Louis imply in other countries like Cuba, United States, and Canada, it's another thing. We, we prefer to put it on the side and yeah. don't talk about it. It's shameful. And with Orador Sur Glen, it's the same. Uh, in the village, in, it was a Saturday morning, beautiful summer and uh, sunny and the Nazi arrived in 1945 to the town and they put all the women and children inside the church and the men outside and they burned down the church. Over 600 people were killed in the village and the village disappeared, you know, yeah. completely. And why we don't talk about it? Yeah, Because it, it was the Nazi and the French soldier too. Participate oh, uh, in the, the French uh, Vichy uh, government. Ex exactly. Yeah. And then this is something when, after the war, Charles de Gaulle decided to rebuild the village on the side and keep that like a memorial. But if you go to to France and to talk to some editors, nobody knows about the Orador Sur Glen. It's like a small reference in the history of the. They did it because um, um, a, a gen um, an SS. Um, Captain was mm -hmm. killed or something like this that. This is one that? of the theory. Yeah. The other one is, you know, after the Normandy disembark, you know, everybody was, the German was like a crazy. They want the, the resistance in the south of France. It was a strong in Limoges mainly. And nobody knows exactly why they decide to burn down the town yeah. and kill over 600 people. You yeah. Know? And uh -huh. when you see the postcards and the images, you see, ah, oh, it's a couple of blocks and the beautiful church destroyed. No, no. Yeah. When you go there, the dimension of the town is, you know, is, is yeah. I, I remember crying in the middle of the, yeah. because it's huge. It was, it was a lot of buildings, restaurants, hotels, cafes, the houses, and you can see the cars, the a lot of things like, you know, yeah. you can see like mm -hmm. uh, there were people and families. And then on the side, there has a cemetery with the names and the picture of most of the, yeah. uh, the yeah. people that were killed. Yeah, know. we were recently in, in Normandy and we saw some of, the, mm -hmm. some of this. Um, this is our New England authors and we're talking with mm -hmm. Armando Lucas Correa. And he's written two wonderful books. And the, the latest book is uh, The Daughter's Tale. And it begins with an elderly woman in New York. Mm -hmm. And she receives a phone call and um, the, a woman says, uh, I have something for you. Mm -hmm. And she intuitively knows mm -hmm. what it's about. Yeah. But she doesn't know her history, right? So t tell us what happens. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, that's the connection with the German girl. Right. The German girl finished when this little girl, you know, go back with her mother to New York. She was visiting one of the survivors of the St. Louis. She's uh, an aunt, great aunt. And then she have a couple of letters in German. She arrived in New York. She, she trying to find the owner of the letter. And then she found this old French girl, Catholic girl, uh, old woman yeah. living in this is beautiful apartment in New York. Mm -hmm. And when the, this old lady opened the door and see her eyes, blue, she blue. feel yes, exactly. She feel like it, they have a connection. And when they op she opened the letter, it was in German, and she collapsed. Yeah. And she pronounced, you know, a phrase in German, a language that she didn't know she speaks. Yeah. yeah. So there was a, there was a she the the stranger came with a daughter, exactly. and she looked at the daughter's blue mm. eyes and said, yeah. "Oh my, yeah, my God, is, that I have a connection with." Yeah, the, I have a connection yeah. there. And then and the, the story is, is you know is since 1939 to 
to today. And, and there was uh, she was from Cuba, right? She didn't she live in Cuba? No, the the sister lived the in si Cuba. The sister yeah, yeah. lived in Cuba. But that's the secret. Oh, okay. oh, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. the forgotten daughter. All right. All right. Then um, uh, then we go back to before World War II mm -hmm. in 1939. Nine, I think, after Kristallnacht, um, mm -hmm. and there was a, a, we're going back to Armanda uh, Sternberg, who ha runs a bookstore mm -hmm. and, uh, in Berlin, and she's, uh, she's pretty savvy. She keeps her, the, the books that are insightful mm -hmm. in, the, in the back room. So tell us what happens to her. Yeah, the, she has, a, a, she, she has the, this beautiful bookstore called Garden of Letter that she had from her father. And after Crystal Nash, you know, they have to eliminate all the, mm -hmm. the books. But we're talking about, you know, the big poets and names that you never think that is going to be eliminated for yeah. the German culture. And that moment she had to, that's at the beginning of the book, she had to decide which book she's going to save. Mm -hmm. And I remember this is something that happened to me. That when I left Cuba oh, I uh, see. In, in 1991 in Havana, in living in Miami, talking to my mother, please send me my books. And every time that you have someone coming from Havana, uh -huh. she sent me, you know, a, a, a small box because they are heavy with three or, or four boxes. And that's yeah. crazy because you can buy, you know, I remember one of them, it was Madame Bovary from Flaubert. You can buy in any, <laughs> any story. But it, there were my books. And, you yeah. know, I, I want my books and yes. my books from college. I keep all of them. Uh, I, I have the same feeling about, <laughs> about certain books. Yeah, yeah. You, you've actually read that book and you know it and you, uh, and you cherish it. And, 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 and then Amanda Stenberg, you know, this mother who run the store and then she's going to have two small children. She has to decide which book she's going to save. Yeah. And that's, that's very important for her. And it's the same when she has to make a drastic decision that is going to change the destiny of the family. Mm. She has to choose who is the daughter she's going to send to Cuba. Yeah. Know? And uh, so the, 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 the two sisters get separated, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't want to give away the story. <laughs> no, it's I'm fine. Away it's the story. Fine. Oh, what, what does she do? What does Amanda do? Um, she, uh, where does she flee to? She, they go into the south of France, right. and then they go to Arador sur claim Yeah. And that, you know, when the Nazi arrived, that happened to most of the survivors from the St. Louis, that they went to France. That that's the reason I have the connection, and they went to a concentration camp, mm -hmm. uh, controlled by the French. And she saved her daughter. That's based in a real story that Judy Steele is one of the St. Louis survivors that she told me that when they went to, then, you know, they were, they were in the St. Louis. They were uh, relocated in France. And they went to the concentration camp and the father saved her uh, the, the, the night before they were sent to Auschwitz. Mm. And then they went to the forest and the father said, look at the trees. And she looked to the trees. One man, you know, took her hand. And when she go back, she never saw her father again mm. and until today. Mm -hmm. And then she grew up like a French for a couple of years. Yeah. And then in, I think in 1949, uh, an uncle, you know, a Jewish uncle from Washington High, yeah. uh, you know, contact her and she have to she, she has another loss because her mother was the French mother. Yeah. She was too small uh, for the German. She was speaking French at that moment. Mm. Yeah. So we're, we're losing all this his, this uh, real history now. I mean, it's so, <laughs> it's uh, so long for yeah. uh, since the war. No, yeah. think about it. The San Luis 80 years this year. May 13 A was 80, 80 years. years. Yeah. And, and Judy was 14 months old. She wasn't at my, at my presentation, May 7 in New York. Yeah. It was very emotional. I have like a three survivors, my oh, little girl yeah. from the St. Louis, and oh. now they are over 80s, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what do you feel when you uh, contact these people? You feel great, oh. uh, like uh, sympathy? The, uh, and, uh, and uh, when I was writing the German girl, I want to finish the book and then talk to the survivor. It was a complete different process than the daughter tale. And because I want to sound the story like a fairy tale, 
you know, in the voice of a, this little girl, that she's going to be 13 years old. Uh, hey. So, so uh, tell me, uh, in World War II, you don't think of Cuba. Did, they didn't have any part in, in the war. Uh, this is the, the only, I think, relation that they have with the history. Is the St. Louis. The St. Louis, yeah. yeah. They create the first uh, Nazi party in Havana. Yeah. And I have the address, the house, when the, mm -hmm. the party run there. But it was for only for a couple of years. After, you know, when after the war, uh, or in the middle of the war, they closed the, by the law, they have to close the, the party. Yes. But they have the Nazi there. Uh, yeah. uh, maybe they also, saw some troops came to fight with the United States. Uh, uh, that's, the that was the pressure. You know, yeah. the Department of State, and I have all these documents and telephone calls and cable between the Department of State and the government of Cuba, because United States, I, I read a lot of letters saying that we, you can accept more Jewish refugees from Europe because all of them, they want to come here. Mm. And they put a lot of pressure in, in the government too. Uh, I, yeah. uh, so well, let me get this straight. The United States put pressure on the, Cuban, the Cuban government, government to st yeah, because, not accept. You know, uh, at the same time, don't think that the Cuba were doing this because they were very nice. They were nice, but they were charging a fortune per passenger, oh, like yes. Dominican Republic. and. Uh, and they were making corrupt. money, yeah. yeah. And what is the reason the, the, the president at that moment say no to the Jewish refugee? Mm -hmm. Because the money went to the director of immigration and the chief of army, not to him. Oh, and they was that another Batista? Was Batista it, was the chief of army. Who became the, 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 the president, president. Exactly. But the funny thing with Batista, because she was the, the powerful man at that moment. Yeah. He was a very smart guy and very, you know, a classic politician. <laughs> When the boat arrived, he was sick, and he never answered on their call. And his uh, doctor said, oh, he has a call, he can answer the phone. Uh, and when the boat left June 2nd, he was, he well was again. awake again. Yeah, I, and, I you know, he, he was like, <laughs> we said he was like a Poncio Pilato, no? He washed his hand, and uh -huh. he's not part of like this Pontius tragedy. Yes, yeah. yes, he washed his hand. Of yeah. it. Okay, um, so... Um, you, uh, your books uh, call for t for tolerance. I think they call for people to be more. Uh, uh, yeah. Did, did you grow? Is this a religious idea that you you grew up? Uh, did you grow up a Catholic? Or? I am. I am Catholic. I am not a religious person. Yeah. But I am Catholic. But most it's, it's more than religion. I think my both book is about, I, I think it's part of the DNA of the human being, and it, this is the theme of the book. We are always afraid of the other one. You know, the people who has a different accent, or a different skin color, or, a diff or belief in different God, or have a different uh, sexual orientation. You know, uh, we are always afraid of the other one. Yeah. And that's, I think this is the, the reason yes, that, that's, that's, that what comes the, book, that's yeah. the essence of the book. And until the day, we, we understand that we are human beings, but we are different. I think the, the, the world is going to be better. Yes, yeah. this is on New England Authors. We're, we're talking with Armando Lucas Correa, and uh, we're talking about his books, uh, two books, uh, The Daughter's Tale, which is the most recent one, and The German Girl, both about World War II. This is part of a trilogy, is it not? Exactly. Yeah. The last one is going to be The Night Traveler. But I need another two or three years uh, to finish. It was yeah. ten years on the, yeah, on the exactly. first one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't talk about uh, the current uh, like immigration into the uh, rich countries, uh, the United States and Europe, <laughs> right? Uh, but it comes through in your book, right? It's, it's so, it, I remember when the German girl uh, it was in print. It was in the middle of the crisis of the Syrian, you know, walking miles in the middle of Europe trying to find a place yeah. and my, my editor called oh my god Armando you see this see, I, I didn't write the book because of, of the immigration crisis but I think it's it's, it's just part of the realities yeah mm. now on your on your website I couldn't help but notice that in the background mm. picture you had a picture of Jerusalem <laughs> yeah. in the back why is that um, I with the book I travel like a, I think I've been traveling to Israel every year without you know and I presented the book in the University of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and it, that was the picture last year. And I love Israel. Uh -huh. how, <laughs> yeah. how, how is it received? How your books received there? Well, the book it was in the academic world. You know, they haven't published in in, in Israel, uh -huh. and I have. 
two editors that are in love with the German girl, but they think is they you know in Israel uh, talking about the Holocaust is too much for them. They you know they oh, they book oh, their. I see. It's different, like in Europe, in you know in. But there, yeah. there are uh, a thousand stories there. I for, know, oh, yeah. But you know, another. This is going to be another story for them. Yeah. yeah. But in the in the university, they love the book. They organize this presentation. Yeah. yeah. But there have been so many books on um, different parts of World War II. What's our, what's our lesson that we're supposed to learn? I think we're running out of time. Uh, Running out of time uh, for the survivors. This is oh yes, this is, that's this right. is yes. one of the the key things I think, and and we we don't learn from history. You know, history repeats itself all the time. Yeah. And if you talk to my children, my daughter is thirteen years old, and my twins are nine. The Holocaust is something that happened like uh, for us, like uh, the Greeks or the y Egyptian, like yes. uh, three thousand years. Yeah. And I always say, no, no, it was. It was, you know, the last century, but that's a couple of years ago. And it was in the middle of the most civilized continent. Yes. In the it was not in Africa or in a small island. No, it was in Germany. Yeah. You know, supposedly, it, it one of the, supposedly civilized. You know, yes. it's one of the most civilized, you know, the, the world of the great thinkers. And, right. And it happened. It can happen again. And, it can happen again. And I want my children uh, to know that. And we talk about it. What is the reason that... We as a human uh, allow that this happen. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. we tend. This is this is a surviving mode. We tend to go to oblivion, or, or you know, or look at the other side. And something is happening here. I don't want to see it. Yes. What was it like to write this uh, emotionally? Uh, the the daughter tell it was easier. The German girl it was I was drained every day. And after I have my children, I cry for everything. I can't cry right now with you. <laughs> you tell me like no, it's don't that cry story. No, no. I, I cry a lot of oh, in, on okay. TV, believe me. All right. And not today. And writing the German girl, I was thinking all the time because I am a, I'm a, I am a parent. I'm a father, and you you think what you have to do. Uh, you have to do everything to save your children. Yeah. And, and I remember writing one of my favorite uh, chapter in The German Girl, this father uh, making a terrible decision in the middle of the boat when they go back to Europe yeah. and they don't have a destiny. Uh -huh. And I was crying. I remember I have yeah. an, an, an apartment in Miami Beach. I was crying. My I, my son, he was in the restroom calling me, Dad, Dad, I finished. <laughs> Come to him. <laughs> and he, he saw me cry and said, What happened to you? Oh, nothing, yeah. Lucas, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, your book calls on a uh, topic of nearly universal um, revel uh, that's relevant uh, today. Uh, give us a number of violent conflicts and, env uh, uh, and environmental crises in the world today that you have received fee feedback on. Yeah. Uh, the funny thing is my, my both book, book, even the daughter still, but the German girl, the first country was a bestseller, it was Canada. Oh, really? And, and the second uh. one was Australia and then uh -huh. United States. Uh -huh. And the first country in the, you know, in the Latin America was Colombia. And then it was Germany, you know, Italy and Sweden. Yeah. And every time that I go, people think that I write these books because of the immigration or the crisis or the or because you know they write, uh, they are taking they, power in Europe. But believe oh, me, the, yes. they they don't think that I finished the book many many years ago. Uh -huh. You know, the process to go to print, I finished the German Girl. I think around two thousand. 14 and uh -huh. it was spring 2016 yeah and the daughter still you know i had to read it again for the promotion because, <laughs> because <laughs> it was, you're, it was you're, like you're a two years so, ago yeah, went to so print ago, i yeah. didn't write this book because all this you know the crazy government that they take in power around the world but yeah, we're seeing all this resurgence of, um, isn't that worrying? Uh, it's worry, yeah, and it's sad yeah, because, yeah. you know, I, I, I live in New York and I love living in, in a city or in a state that people is from every place mm -hmm. and we understand each other and everybody has an accent and even the New Yorker, they came from another part of right, the country. Right. And, and I live in a bubble because I think, oh, this is United States, but this is not United States. You know, no, we live no. in a bubble. We yeah. live in 
in it's the real a, America is different. Uh, it's so wonderful to walk in the streets of New York or London and hear uh, t uh, 10 different languages mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the block. It's, uh, I think it's a great, yeah. uh, great asset. So, so you, you talked about this as being a trilogy. Is that your, ne mm -hmm. your next book is, is, uh, is going to be about World War II, right? A yes, it's, it's going to be called The Night Traveler. And it's about a little girl, too, another family that uh, she played at night all the time. She had this beautiful mother, she's a poet, and they lived together in this apartment in Berlin, and everything happened at nine. Mm. And she's always she rejected for other people. She doesn't understand why she's seven years old. And the mother is desperate trying to find a place to send her daughter out of Berlin. She's black. Uh -huh. And she's uh, called Micheline, when your uh -huh. mother is white and your father is black uh -huh. from the colonies in this case. And Hitler created a law that if you are a seven years old girl, you have to be sterilized if you are a Michelin or go to a concentration uh -huh. camp. But at that moment in 1939, the only people who get out from Alem Germany, it was the Jewish. And, and then she has to find a Jewish family to take the daughter to oh, Cuba in this I case. See, I see, I see. And then that's the reason they left the country at night, because at night the mother said, and she has a poem about it, everybody has the same color. Well, it's so good to talk to you. Thank and you. I really look forward to reading you. This is uh, New England mm -hmm. Authors. Uh, we're talking with Armando Lucas uh, Correa. Uh, his books are, uh, uh, his latest book is The Daughter's Tale. Uh, we record here in Cambridge, Massachusetts and broadcast on stations throughout New England. Remember, watch locally. Thank you. Thank you.